almost all that songs too long, too. I've got to leave the same number three. <laughs> we started it. I wasn't going to say nothing. He just jumped around before. And I can't sing it. And I don't know. I don't know. It happened for a time sometimes. I can't take that to the Lord. I can't take that to the Lord.
And Jesus said to me, Fear not, fear not, this ugly day. Before this day, before this day is over, before this day is over, you'll be with me in paradise on heaven's golden shore. Three men on
long keep it on. It's about what Dad used to say. So remember. Tell you one thing, Brother Troy. Wayne can love to good, good, good work. Oh yeah. And I yeah. know they're all mine. Good work. Good work. Heard that. Heard that. Dad and Dad were real close friends. Good work. Good work. Good great work. Great work. Good guy. He's a good boy. I think. And, and uh, he also said that uh, that she had wrote a little letter and signed her name to it, instructions, and she was good about giving instructions. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, said that she wanted it just a memorial after things settled down. That's what she put it to. Uh, there won't be a funeral service, uh, as far as I can understand. It. Said that he would uh, try to get things together and let people know we don't have a memorial service. So, just like I said, remember when you were, not only them, but all of our people just lost love on you. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Painful thing to go through, for sure. So anybody else will go to prayer. Brother Charlie, I'm my cousin. I asked you all for prayer every other night. She passed away Friday. But I did find out that she did have a Lord in my heart. Yeah. 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 Everybody is. Brother Charlie, I've got a first cousin. He's a special touch from the Lord. We want the Christian people to remember him in prayer. I do bless. Uh, Dale was going to come up this evening. He told me, and Teresa's having it pretty rough. She, they, they don't even know what caused her large intestine to collapse. I never heard tell that. There's so many odd things going on anymore. Mm -hmm. And uh, she has had one more of the time. And she's got to just be on a liquid diet for a while and give them an opportunity to start pulling back out of it. And uh, so she was having a pretty rough day today. And so he said he was going to stay home with her. So yeah. tell everybody to be a friend for her. Anybody else? But I remember my companion, we had her home coming out home today. I see a lot of my brothers and sisters, brother Charlie, you know, he's doing real good here. He says, keep on and keep it on. That's what I'm talking about. I'll be blessed, yes. I had Dave Yance for a while, so. Yep. He's a good man. He's a good spirit for me. That's good. Yeah. Brother Charlie, uh, I'd like for the church to remember my little grandsons, two of them this evening, Braden and Isaac. Uh, they found their pack all dead and had found him yesterday and probably had been dead for a couple of days. Yeah. And they took him to Charleston, but the little boys, is, they love him, but they weren't real, real close. He was so sick with cancer that he couldn't visit and be with them a lot and remember his family. Brother Charlie, Sister Kimberly, who's a member here, her sister is in ICU. She desires the prayers of the church. Lots of well, to pray for anybody else. Remember our family, Brother Charlie. Uh, Linda's got a cousin, uh, Kim, that's uh, in the hospital. The son's looking very good. Pray for her. And remember Michaela, she's working. She's been here. And we got a lot of lost people in need prayer, too. Yes. Anybody else? All that would like to have a part in this prayer, go pick your hand. God bless you. Never mind, Brother Shane. Anybody else will go to prayer? If not, we'd like uh, Brother Bill, would you lead us in this prayer? Everybody pray. Let's 
Won't be no water flowing for uh, mankind to get a hold of. It's going to be a lake of fire. The fire of brimstone, you think about it, will come down from God out of heaven. Burn the elements. Melt this earth. Amen. Judgment has took place. Yeah. It melt this earth and it began to run. Brother, the way I understand it, it began to just float, just like the water did. And them souls be tasted right back in into that. Think about that. And they just, I believe they just go over and over in that endless time. Yeah. No, no way of calling up on God. No way. You know, the great, greatest uh, thing we that people will ever uh, let slip by them is the Word of God. It, we we uh, I hear people say, well, all my life I've heard about the lake bar and the brimstone. I've heard about, I've even had people say, uh, are you one of them uh, hell's bar and brimstone preachers? <laughs> I said, Bible say it. And then I said, I'm not afraid to say what the Bible say. That's right. That's, Amen. that's the word. Uh, see, fear not man who can kill Kill the body back there, them that can destroy both body and soul in, 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 in a place of torment. That's right. See? That's what we want to fear, that yeah. God is God is a big uh, uh, mean God that's ready to just cut you off, just to get rid of you, cut you off as soon as you make a mistake. But I'll tell you what, you, you make a mistake and you go to him, you know what he said? He just forgive you if you ask. Yeah. You have not because you ask not. That's right. See, every Christian in here, I don't know if anybody lost in here or not. I don't know, you know how people is. I take their word what they are, don't you? Amen. I take their word. They say it. They're born to be a Christian. I say, you're my brother, you're my sister. I'm not to judge. I don't judge no one. But you know, in this world, our works, uh, in this world, our walks and our, 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 our activities and stuff will tell what, which side we're on. Yep. You look know what's going on through the world. You watch the news, you see it. What's going on even in the schools. Where are little children at? Yeah. I remember a Christ taking a little child sitting up on his knee to suffer little children and said, Come unto me, forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of heaven. And then they go out here and they try to destroy these little fellows. Think about that, yeah. Teach them all this Satan is with all this young. You know, I believe we're getting closer than people think. I do too, brother. The end is drawing out. There are children of God now. You know something, other? I believe as Isaiah said, first to come together reason one with another. You know, it's hard to look out through this world, see, people. If they're claiming to be Christians, they'd be until me and I pray for you. And before it's over with, they tell them how they hate somebody and start cursing. I said, I don't want that kind of Christian pray for me. I don't want that. The Bible teaches us to love one another. Yeah. If we say we, we love God and, and hate our brother, and we become a liar, ain't we? That's right. The love of God is not love in us. I see that a lot, don't you? Yeah. Up to my time coming up as a Christian, I've been in 46 years. And I've seen lot come and lot go. Start and quit. But you know something other, it's just like get out of here at, at, 
in your, in your race with a car, or horse, or whatever it is, if you stop in the middle, you lose the prize. Amen. You lose. <clears throat> we must hold steadfast in the Word of God and, and, and tell people that you cannot be a homosexual and live that lifestyle and expect to go where I'm going. Yeah. According to the Word of God. Yeah. According to His Word. Now listen, evil can't get there. No. Sin can't get into the kingdom of heaven. No. We must be bought and paid for with that precious blood that flowed down the cross of Calvary. Down the side of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. If you believe that, then you know what He said? If we believe that He's done this for us and call upon Him, we be found with him. Is the little brother Holy Ghost talking about the, the, the thief on the cross? I've heard people argue about Brother Charlie Beth uh, That thief can be saved. He ain't been baptized yet. He was talking direct to the to, to the death, burial, and resurrection money. Amen. He's already baptized. And <laughs> praise his holy name. I believe that there, see, but that, that man that stole whatever he stole, I believe he entered into the kingdom of God. Well, the Lord said, what? Well, yeah. He said, 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 I hear a lot of talk about uh, we about to get into war and stuff like that, and which we've been in wars and the Bible says to be wars and rumors of wars and earthquakes in diverse places. It's already happening. But they talk about the nuclear power. It's going to destroy the earth. I I got news from them. And they can call me a dummy or whatever they want to call me. It's all right with me. It don't bother me. But they can't destroy the world. No, not the whole world. That's but you know, in the Word of God, it talks about when He when He comes in the resurrection last day. When He comes to get the church to take home with Him, He speaks about what the fire already came. You ever think about that? Mankind get out here and kill the poor. It may be nuclear times. It may be a burning. But they can't destroy it. That's, right. That's reserved for the power of God. The power of God. Listen, children, we may be closer than we think. The Bible teach us in the resurrection at the last day that that trumpet will sound and dead in Christ shall rise first. Yeah. The grave's going to open up and they're going to come forth. I hear people say, I want to be by this and grave and by that and when, when it happens, I'll tell you what I want to be. I want to be in the center of God's will. God do bless you. That's where I want to be in the center of God's will. I know I have her made. <laughs> Praise His holy name. You know what will conquer the world? Love. Yeah. Love of God. Love of God will conquer the world. You just imagine, Brother Charlie, if uh Yeah, I had one son, we got a son, and uh, it'd be hard for you to say, kill me, instead of that one. Still my son, take me. But you know what? The Bible said we are to be willing now. Willing. We don't have to do that. I don't know if any Christian person wants to kill another. We don't have to do that, but be willing 
if we it comes to that part, we lay our lives down one for another. Yeah, that's according to the word. Yeah. Yeah, according to the word. There's no greater love than this. The Bible says that a man laid down his life for his friend. Jesus said, you are my friend if you do whatsoever I commanded you. Amen. What did he command us to do? He commanded us to repent and believe the gospel. Go out and be buried with him in baptism. It's not for saving the soul out there in the water. No. It's worship, not for worship the way of the blood. It's the answer to good conscience towards God, ain't it? Yeah, that's what the Word says, yes. It's Jesus paid the price on the cross. He died on the cross. And, and they took him and laid him in Job's tomb for three days. All he needed for was Yeah. For he told him, he said, you tire this temple down. In three days, I'll rise up again. He did, yes. They called him a deceiver and called him liars and everything, didn't they? Said it took us 46 years to build this, and he had tired down in, in three days, right up in three days. He wasn't talking about that building they'll turn they built. He was talking about this temple. That's right. That's right. He was talking about his body. So he he paid a price, he yielded up the ghost. What the Bible says. He yielded up then. Yep. But before he did, but you know what he done? He raised his daughter and knives towards heaven. said, Father, pray me out of them. They don't know what they're doing. Now you're talking about love, huh? That's, That's love. love, yes. Yeah, you're talking about love. That's the greatest love. Great, no greater love than that. But God, I heard him tell you one. Follow the Spirit, brother. But listen, it come up to time. Jesus stayed 40 days and nights there on the earth after he rose from the dead. Yeah. Teaching his disciples then. Yeah, sure did. And he called them together one time. See, he told them once before there, he said, he said, he is expecting that I'll go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will come. That's right. What was the comforter? It's the Holy Ghost. Man. Yeah. Yeah. Holy Ghost. So he called them together one day. Actually, he stayed there 40 days and nights upon the earth. He called them together out to a little town called Bethany. There's two men. The Bible said two men. I believe the same. Yeah, that's what we were talking about this morning. Yeah. Stand, they're standing there dressed in wild and pearl. Mm -hmm. They asked the question. They look at them, you know how we would all be looking at something going on up here. Well, sure we would, yeah. Everybody be looking up. They say, ye man of Galilee, why stand gazing into the heaven? This same Jesus, the same one, is coming back in the like manner. But he's not a coming to, uh, for a man to lay hands on. He's coming out to one thing. Church. church. That's right, brother. Amen. The one he bought paid for on the cross of Calvary with his precious blood. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. You think about this tonight. This man called Jesus, he didn't just come into town and let him lay hold of him, take him up and nail him to the cross, but he came in and teaching them and preaching his everlasting God, gospel himself, and you know what they done? They beat him on worse for them. They beat him, they whipped him, they they cursed him, they plucked the beard from his from his face. They done all this against him. And still he went, he went, went to the cross, let him nail the nails in his feet and his hands and uh, and pierced his side and looked towards heaven and said, Father. Forgive them. Oh, Lord. Man, you know, there couldn't be nothing else any stronger than that. Baby. Couldn't be nothing else any stronger than that. What he's saying to the people out in this world, 
he come to redeem you back to the Father. That's right. Thank you, Lord. You must believe in the death and burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ. You must believe in the, his gospel. You must believe he ascended back to heaven. You must believe tonight that he's sitting in the right hand of his Father. Make an intercession for us, ain't you? Yeah, thank you, man. Yeah. Yes. You must believe. That's why, well, listen, listen. Uh, some people may see it differently, but this is the way I understand That Jesus don't even know the time he said that he's going to come. That's for it to the the Father kept it in store for himself. Yeah. He's going to look at his son and say, Son, it's time. Go get your church that you bought with your blood. Jesus is not going to say, Father, wait, let, let's wait another four or five years. There are a group down here that they, they, they're bad. I got to try to save them. Get them away from Satan. He ain't going to do that. No. You know why? He's going to honor his father. Amen. Yeah. He's, he's going, I believe it's a gay boy. He's going to tell him, just say, get ready to sound that trumpet. That trumpet, when that trumpet blows, it's going to be so loud, it's going to wake them out here, burning out here. Wake the beast, yeah. It's going to wake them. According to the scriptures, it says, it says the earth will people come out. Push them out. They'll come out. They'll meet the Lord, won't they? Yes, they will. Them has got that spirit in their lives. They receive it when they took the birth. Mm -hmm. I'm walking in his walls, keeping his commandments. <coughs> He's going to tell them, come on up from the cloud, Jerry. Come on up here. Yeah. And what about this group that uh, don't know me? What's going to happen then? Oh, listen. They're going to start running. Running, screaming, hollering, praying. What are they praying for? Time's in. They're praying for the rocks and mountains. Turn over us. Hide us from the face of Him. Where? Sitting on the throne. Time is no more. People, good people, they stand and just never bow their heads and ask for forgiveness. You're going to be in that number. You know, I, I think about that. I, uh, a lot of times I think about that. If they could just see things like that open up to them in their mind, Lord, they come back by from me. They come back by us. Everybody will. But let me tell you something other. Tonight, I'm here in church week. Tomorrow, I might be in presence of the Lord. Thank you, about it. My father of all of us. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Praise the Lord. And now uh, we pick out the youngest person in here. Let's pick out the youngest in here. They may look at, at me, I don't know, I might be the oldest one here. I believe I am. Might look at me and say, well, his life is about ended. You know what I'm saying? His life is about gone. But the youngest person here may leave it before I do. Amen. You know the good part about the young ones, uh, uh, where they growing up, they had never come to the knowledge of good and evil. They're in safe with the Lord. Yeah. That's God's children. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And the Bible teaches us, I was telling you, but what to go about what they're trying to do to their kids. Kids out, you know, in schools in the board, uh, you, everybody sees it. Teaching them.
and all this filth and stuff like that. And, and, uh, what they're trying to do is pull them away from God. Yeah. Try and pull them away from God. If we had a family of little ones that believe in Christ, they're better off with a millstone tied around their neck and taste it in the sea and drown in that. We must be careful of what we do and what, how we treat little kids. But listen, if we go to heaven, we will be sitting with kids. Go and see them that live. Go and see them. But them, them that reject the Lord and Savior of this world, they're, what they're doing, they're just turning down eternity of joy and peace and happiness for eternity pain, suffering, and crying and praying. Pray to die and death flee from me. Lord, how much of this? I'd rather leave here now. I'd rather leave here now. It's no, I have one thing that much against me when I when I stand before you. Yep. I'd rather be gone tonight. People, let's live do as we can. Let's love each other as good as we ever could. Let's love the Savior Jesus Christ with all our hearts, soul, mind, and strength. Let's all get ready actually to go home to be with him in a world that never ends. Amen. Well, I'm telling you something. It's worth it all. Yeah. God bless you and I love you and everyone. I, I love, I love, I love all them I've never seen before. I love them, them. I get to go home with. Yeah. Talk about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all them. They're uh, uh, this. We we'll know all of them, won't we? I think we will. Yeah, they've been gone for years and years. We we'll know all them. Thank God, there are no secrets in heaven. Yet. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, whatsoever my father told me, I told you. Yeah. He keep no secrets. We keep no secrets. Secrets is for Satan mm -hmm. and his followers. Right? Yeah. Satan and his followers. But you can. Uh, Satan's followers can break loose because the one is on high, sitting on the right hand of his father, if they cry out to him. Now, I, let me say this again, I'm going to let you have it. Uh, I had people say, say uh, uh, how the sinner get saved? I hear people preach that uh, uh, he hear not sinners. That's true. He does not hear sinners. But when they become a seeker, they're fine. Yeah. See, it changes never that way. A sinner got to come, 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 got to hear the word and believe the word and obey the word. Yeah. Amen. Then you know what? That, that, that little man that hung on the cross, write your name down in the of the line. Think about what an honor it is. <laughs> Yeah, I'll tell you something, children. I, I, I felt bad when I, when I started out this evening coming here, but I feel good now. Yeah. I know I obeyed God. Uh, I obeyed Him. When you called me, I said to myself, I don't want to reject. Yeah. Don't want to. Don't let a little bit of pain just overcome us. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. All the pain be gone when this body is gone. Yeah, Amen. Praise the Lord. The one, the one we have in, in that in that time when we have, we'll even have pain in it. Mm. It won't <coughs> even have a tear in it. No. Oh, so our Heavenly Father said, when we enter into heaven, He will wipe it away. Yeah. Never be another tear in right. Never another pain. All it will be joy, peace. And happiness in a world that never ends. Amen. <laughs> I love, I love you, everyone. Now listen, if I if I 
I said anything with the would hurt your feelings or anything and hit the word of God, I tell you, don't jump on me. <laughs> jump on him. <laughs> I never recorded that. He had it recorded. Yeah. All I'm doing is just being the mouthpiece for it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's all good. And, and it pays us well to have a big mouth too, don't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. God bless you, little brother. I love you. I love every one of you. Yeah. I enjoyed that. I heard, heard the truth there that man or woman that's free the truth will set them free. And, uh, and like the scripture said, whether it be I or they, so Jesus is free, and so they will leave. And we, we think about so many different things that, that come to our mind while he was speaking. They're all of it. But Bruce is, is, is wonderful from the Word of God. When it's from the Word of God, it's got power in it, it's got life in it. And it just, when you get to thinking about Brother James, one thing, it, you know, he'll run you to another thing. And, mm -hmm. But I thought about uh, when the Lord had promised them old prophets that he was, he was called the Messiah. Mm -hmm. And he said, the Messiah's coming. And uh, they had prophesied that for years and years. And, and the ones that was faithful, Brother Bill was looking for that. Yeah. And uh, so when the Lord come, they, they was expecting one to come in, in a king's robe, I reckon. They, yeah. Just like they're still expecting right now, yeah. they's going to come over to the king's robe and set up. I mean, that's the carnality of man's mind. Yeah. It ain't changed. Carnality's not. And so Brother Jeff, they, they was expecting that. So we're, when he come, a, a little carpenter man's son, a little poor man, uh, they just couldn't, they couldn't, they couldn't retain that. And uh, so here's little John. He was a forerunner. Yeah. Like the scripture yeah. talked about over the book of Malachi. I think about this because that was just the beginning of, of, of the, the gospel that the Lord was bringing forth. And uh, so here's Malachi and he's prophesying. He's wrote down exactly what the Lord told him. said, this is going to happen. Write her down. Get it to my people. Uh, and I think that was like 400 and some years before it came about that he was one of them last prophets that was prophesying yeah. that. Yeah. And uh, he began to say, Before that great and noble day of the coming of the Lord, mm -hmm. I'll send Elijah to my people, and he will turn the hearts of the fathers right. to the children, yeah. and the hearts of the children to the fathers. Mm -hmm. Least I come and smite the earth with a curse. Now, Brother Chris, I, you know, used to, I looked at that, and I just, I overlooked it. I didn't see the seriousness of that. But now God in heaven had the power, whether to set up salvation, or to say, no, I'm not going to. I'm just going to let it all just be destroyed. Yes, I want you to think about that. But ain't you glad that he sent that Amen. spirit of Elijah and a little man Amen. called John. And when John got up of age of 30 years old, according to them old scriptures, that they couldn't uh, speak in front of the audience until Amen. they reached the age of 30 years old. And here he was, and he began to uh, preach God's word by the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. that was directing him. And, and he began to go on the banks of Jordan there. And with that spirit telling them that, that the kingdom of heaven now is at hand. That means but when you reach your hand out, you can get a hold of it. That's how close, Brother John, that it is. He said, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And I do indeed uh, baptize you with water unto repentance. And that there's one greater than I am. I that's going to come right just shortly. He's greater than I am. As who shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire not many days in. And the fan is in his hand and he'll thoroughly purge his floor. And he'll gather that weed into his garner. And that chaff he's going to burn up with unquenchable fire. I will some of that fire that the brother was talking about. But the Lord said while he's here know ye not that a little fire is kindled. Uh, he talking about that very word uh, that was coming out of his mouth according to some of them scriptures. Uh, that fire that reached right down inside of men and women. And, and listen, Tyler Playhouse, uh, I burned this old creature up. And uh, when we heard the word of God preached uh, about 38 years ago, uh, and I'd heard it before then and before yeah. then right on back. Uh, uh, but when I heard it about uh, uh, 38 years ago, uh, it burnt this old boy up. Why? Uh, because I truly believed in Brother Bill. I took him at his word. 
that I was a lost man headed for a devil's right. hell. And if I didn't do what the Lord told me to, I was going to stay right on that journey and end up right in hell, Brother Andy. And I didn't want to do that. And I began to seek the good old way and walk therein. And, and we couldn't get in ourselves. But as the brother said, I began to repent down in my heart and my mind talking to the Lord. Lord, I know I'm a lost man. And I know I need you. And I know if I don't do what you told me to do, I'm going to die and go to that awful place called hell. And I don't want nobody to go there, Brother Amen. Chris. And nobody don't have to. Dad used to say it's not so bad to be a sinner, but it's real bad to stay a sinner because the gospel's being preached and the power of God's reaching out to his people to bring them forth from that corruption that Satan got all these people bound up in corruption and then feel that they come out of that. They're going to stay bound up. No matter what they think, well, I'm a good old boy. I've heard people say, yeah, yeah, I'm a good old boy. Now, God won't throw a good old boy over in hell. I'm good to my neighbors, and that's all good. I'm going to brag on that. I like good neighbors. But I'm telling you, the devil won't get you an inch in heaven's country. I'm telling you that you can be the meanest man that ever was upon top of this earth, a murderer and all kinds of things, just like uh, the old boy hanging there on the cross. And when you repent before an all eyes God and you believe that he is a Savior, uh, just like that man on the cross did, uh, that uh, when he believed, he said, uh, when that you enter into thy kingdom, remember me. And God was a heart searcher and know that he believed that he was God on the cross uh, and that he could do something for him. And because that God is a heart searcher, uh, he said, this day uh, shalt thou be with me in paradise. Yeah. Amen. And he was, he was. and he is. Yeah. Amen. I want you to believe that. That's what yeah. God said. That's Some people said, well, he wasn't baptized. Let me tell you, yeah. that commission was not given yet. Right. He was a teaching them old apostles to do that later. Amen. They were still in that old covenant. Let's study it out and get it right. Yeah. That he could be accepted because I am the resurrection and the life. Yeah. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet yeah. shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. There's people here right now that is that close. Look, can you see between my fingers? Have pretty close. They're that close to giving their life to the Lord. And, and that's not close enough. No, no. Got to go all the way. Amen. Got to turn loose of whatever's in the way and go all the way and turn their life over to the Lord. And the Lord's a heart searcher. He added to the church God does daily, Brother Jeff, yeah. as should be saved through his son Jesus. There is but one way to God. Used to that old devil stood before God and was the accuser of the brother. But he can't do that no more. And because there's only one way that you can reach the throne of God. And that's through his son Jesus. Amen. And I'm telling you the devil ain't got power uh, to be able to go through the son Jesus right. and get to God. Amen. He can't accuse the brother no more. No. But I'm telling you the one that sat at the right hand of the father, he can justify you. And when he justifies you, he'll turn to the Father with a big grin on his face. Does he say that in the Bible? It don't have to. We know that. We know that he does. He's happy. He's pleased when men and women turn their life over to him. And when they do, he'll turn to the Father. Father already knows it, but I'm trying to make it plain. They'll understand. I'm grinning and saying, hey, there's another one that's come out of the field of sin. That's come out why? Because they believed in the only begotten Son of God, full of grace and glory and truth, and His name is Jesus. Amen. And glory is to serve an all-powerful God that knows everything. He is such a merciful, merciful God that it's not His will that any should perish, but all would come under repentance. And if you'll do that, you'll live. But if you don't do that, you'll die. Yeah. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not on the Son shall not see life. And the judgment and all the things that God has against those that's evil will be upon him. Yes, sir. What it says. You know how glorious it is this evening, Brother John, that God has given our people that we love dearly 
yeah. that's still on the outside of the church. Sis, one more chance. And you know how good that it feels to Christian men and women when they take opportunity in that one more chance that God has given and they come to the Lord? It makes them happy. But they don't have no idea how happy it'll make us. I've seen people that I didn't know a thing about. I've went to church and they was a stranger to me as far as being known and personal. But when they give their life to the Lord, have rejoiced in it. Yeah. Why? Because of the love of God. I got his place down inside of us, Brother Elmer. Yeah. I that when somebody gives their life to the Lord, we rejoice. Yes, sir. Why it says in the book that the angels rejoice over one that has repented and turned their life over to the Lord. More than ninety and nine just people. Amen. Can you see angels up there saying, Woo, look at our Lord, another one's giving their life to you. That's what I'm talking about, rejoicing. Yeah, yeah. I ain't talking about saying, yeah, there's another one. <laughs> That's not rejoicing. <laughs> Man, I picture them angels, I'm telling you, they will rejoice. Yeah. We do, don't we? Yeah. Don't we throw that hand and say, glory. Yeah. Another one's come out of the field of sin. Yeah. When old Isaiah begins to write this, I can see the Lord down through that history of time. Turn to them old boys and he chosen as his vessel to do a work while they was here. Hey, old Isaiah, I'm going to surely do this. I want you to write it down and get it out to my people right now and put her in a book that down through the generation of time. They'll see that I am God and I'm going to fulfill it. And when it's fulfilled, even people in the time that we're at right now will look at the book of Isaiah and say, looky here, 720 years before that he done it. He done it. Yeah. I want you to think about that. This was not done in the corner by the hand of man. This was done by a powerful God that knoweth everything and loves each and every one of us with a great love. That he was willing to undo his son Jesus I'm from heaven's country and come down here and take my sin and your sin and nail it to the cross and tuck it to the ground where it deserves and left it there for you and for me. Amen. That's how glorious this is. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He hath anointed me to preach the gospel unto the poor. Mm -hmm. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted and to preach deliverance and to preach deliverance and to preach deliverance unto those in captivity of the devil and to give sight to the blind and set at liberty them that are bruised. And to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. That's your right. He was coming to do that for us. Yes. And he done that in a little synagogue that morning. Brother Thomas, Bob Ten used to call him Brother yeah, Thomas. He is a I'm telling that tickles me to death. Sister yeah. Angel, think about that, how good that is. Yeah. Yeah. Family of God going to heaven's country together one day. Come, Lord Jesus, come quickly. Boy, as soon as I say that, I think about our lost people. So, Wait, and no wonder that old man wrote that song says, wait a little longer, sweet Jesus. But he's not going to do that. But I know what the old man was talking about, Brother Bill, when he wrote that song. He wants everybody to be saved. Yeah. That's what Paul was talking about over there when he was writing. He said, my prayer to God is that all of Israel be saved. Yeah. I've heard some of the brothers say all Israel is going to be saved. That's the spiritual Israel. Yeah, amen to that. Yeah. But now he was talking about old natural Israel. Why? Because that's part of his family that he come out of. Uh -huh. He cares for people. We do too, don't we? Yeah. That's why we say, you know, wait a little longer, sweet Jesus. We know that he's got a set time when he's coming. I ain't going to change it, Brother Chris. No. But that's our love that we have towards God's people, that they all be saved before they come. Because when he comes, oh my goodness, when he comes, According to the scripture, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess of the glory of God. Right now, my people, I'm trying to tell you the best I can. Right now is the day of salvation. Harden not your heart. Now is the accepted time. You should be willing from your heart to bow your knee before an all wise God that loves you and died for you and rose for you. And as the brother said, sit at the right hand of the Father, make an intercession on your behalf to see it. What a blessing is that? That's going to stop one of these days. Amen. Then it's going to be too late for our people when it stops. 
And I can't tell you when it's going to stop, Brother Bill. It no. could be just in a few more moments mm -hmm. before that I get through speaking. It could stop. That's how serious this is, Brother Jeff. It's going to be your last song. You know, when Jesus preached that word down to that little synagogue that morning, they know what that scripture was talking about. Them old, them old timers, they had read it over and over and over, no doubt they had read it right there in a congregation. And they thought it was there. This is a young man boy. I'm telling you, he's presented it well. You know what the scripture said about Jesus? No man ever spoke like that man. He spoke with power and authority. Yeah. So he must have spoken well, didn't he? Yes. They spied as a mouse in that tribe. It, does it say they spied as a mouse? No, I'm telling you that they was. He had her attention. <laughs> it don't have to go in detail, brother. Bill. We understand what the Lord's talking about. Yeah. That little fellow called Jesus, I don't know where he sat down at, but he sat down after he reached the book back to him. What book? Book of Isaiah. 720 years before, said, write her down for me. I'm going to fulfill this one of these days. And he's going to fulfill it all one of these days. Big part of it's already fulfilled, but there's one thing yet that's not fulfilled. He's going to split the eastern sky like light that he shines from the east to the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Ready or not, we want you to be ready. Yes. He went and sat down that morning in front of that crowd. It's quiet, ain't it? <laughs> That's what it was on that morning. And I can just see him, Brother Paul, looking around that congregation and him thinking, well, boy, that was a short sermon, but it was powerful. Wonder why he ain't saying nothing else. These young fellas, when they finally get to the age of 30, they're big mouth, they want to just keep talking. But now he just said a few things and sat down. You reckon they was thinking that? I guarantee you that son of thinking that. But I'm telling you, they started changing their mind about this when he said this next yeah. day. This day, this is a strong statement, brother. Yeah. Better be able to back it up. This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Yeah. Yeah. Man, when they began to think about that, scratching them bald heads. <laughs> yeah. Well, now, we know what that's talking about. That's talking about the Messiah that comes. And he's, he's claiming to be the Messiah. Right. Made him mad at a bunch of bulls. Now, that's the way the world is, ain't it? Now, Charlie, you said he was in the church. Yeah. Sure Uh-oh, boy, think about that. <laughs> Do you think there's some churches out of order in this day and time like the one then? Uh, sure you ain't kidding? Yes, Lord, yes. Lord, Lord. Some it's getting worse, Brother Bill, all the time, ain't it? Yeah, yeah. They're getting away from the true gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. They're adding to and taking away, and that's just good enough for the devil. Yeah. If you add to God's word from the front of Genesis to Revelation, all the plagues that's written therein shall be added unto you. If you take away from the word of God, your name shall be taken out of the land of life. Amen. If it was ever there. Amen. You think about people doing that, wonder if it's ever there. Very ill. God wants to put everybody's name in the Lamb Book of Life. That's why that he sent his son down here. That is the glorious, most powerful thing that could ever be done for any of us to get your name wrote down in the Lamb Book of Life. You know what my wife said years ago? Some of the women said it's hard to say. <laughs> Never had thought of it until she said that, Brother Jay. She said, I believe that our name is written down in the Lamb Book of Life in his blood. Man, oh man, when she said that, I thought, amen to that. That's why he shed his blood, that we be covered by that blood. Is that in the scriptures? <laughs> but the essence is in the scriptures. That just amazes me. I miss her. I'll see her again. Why? Because Jesus said it could. Yes. Do you want to see your loved ones again? Make ready and you'll see him again. Amen. Will you know him one day after a while? The Lord foretold us ye shall be known even as ye are known. Yeah. Yes, sir. I know I'll know Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob because they know my God. And God said a long time ago, he said, I am the God of the living, not the dead. Right. Yeah. If you're dead and you 
want God to be your God. Come alive. And you can get the blood of Jesus. Amen. He'll bring you alive. Yes, amen. He promised to quicken everyone that would come to Him with a broken and contrite spirit. He said, in no wise we will turn you away, but I'll make your sons and daughters to the Most High God. And the Most High God will be your Father. Yeah. Man, that sounds close family to me, brother. I like it. Them old boys in that synagogue, and I know I speak about this quite often, but it fascinates me. I thought about this so seriously, about how people can turn on somebody that preached so wonderfully that they brag on for a moment, and then when he reveals the truth, and he did, had turned on them. Yeah. 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 Why this man and a blasphemer? They got angry, snatched a hold of it. We call it manhandling. Rubbed him up, carried him out to the brow of the hill where the church was built there and that little synagogue was built there. And was going to throw him headlong over there and he just passed through the midst of it. Yeah. I could just see him. Where would he go? Yeah. <laughs> what have you done? That's what happened, brother. Yes. The world don't believe that. Christian men and women do yeah. because it tells it in the Bible, Brother yeah. Billy, exactly what took place. Yeah. Before that they done that to him, he told them, Ye shall surely say this proverb unto me. <laughs> Do here in thine own town and city as thou hast done in Capernaum. I want you to think about what he was telling them beforehand. Because they didn't believe, they didn't receive, and he left that place because they didn't believe and they didn't receive, and he done no healing, never done no converting there. Now, I'm not talking about forever, I'm talking about on that day. He left there and went right straight to Capernaum, as the scripture said, and began to, I'm telling you, do some magnificent miracles. And when his own hometown of Nazareth, that's where he's talking about, yeah. heard about it, they scratch them heads and say, uh, they come back over here and do some of them miracles that we see you doing over converted. Just like he foretold them. Mm -hmm. Physician, heal thyself. In other words, in his own land, heal the people in his own land. He left there. He wasn't going to do nothing with them because of the way that their attitude and heart was. Yeah. But when he got over there in that other land, he began to do magnificent miracles. Yeah, and when he was over there, he went to another little synagogue. And in that synagogue was a feller that had, had devils in him. Yeah. Had a long time. Yeah. Boy, you think about a man going to church and trying yeah. to get a little comfort. And just yeah. like back in the old scripture when Saul was troubled yeah. and with that evil spirit because he done evil and was not doing the will of God, from him and put an evil one in him. You mean God can do that? Oh, that scares me, don't you? Don't want no evil. I want the good, don't you? We can keep it if we'll do what God said to do. We can sure keep it. He promised that. And Saul found out that this little fellow called David could play on that harp and sing in pretty songs that's wrote down for us and to be able to sing to this day. In psalms, that's what they are. Mm -hmm. David wrote a lot of them. They're psalms. And when Saul heard the pretty music and the words of God coming through a man that was anointed of God, he comforted him. Mm -hmm. That evil spirit said, Boys, I tell you what, evil spirits don't like the good news from a far country. Evil spirits don't like that good spirit of the Holy Ghost because it's so powerful. They just cringe and they just buckle up and say, boys, I can't do nothing with that. And Saul was comforted. And then in a little while after David was away from him, right back trouble again. Well, this old boy that was in the synagogue had devils in him. Yeah. And the Lord knows it when he walked in there. The Lord knows all about us, don't he? I'm sure he, he can take care of that if you'll let him take care of it. Got to believe that he will. Amen. A believer is a doer. That's what God's right. word. Yes, what it says. A doer is a believer. Them old devils began to speak and said, I know you. You're the Holy One of God. 
God. Yeah. You know what the scripture said over farther over in the book of James? That the devils fear and tremble. Yeah. They know who God is. Yeah, sure they fear and tremble. Yeah. They believe. It don't say nowhere in the scriptures that devils have faith, but it says they believe. That faith is the substance of things hoped for, human beings. Yeah. And that fully believe and confess with their mouth and was buried with Christ in water baptism has faith. You got to get it started in that faith and let it grow. Yes. Do what God said. You can sit in your seat and believe that all the days of your life you'll be just like the devils at the end time be cast away. They believe too. The devil, the main old devil, Satan, the serpent, he believes. He fears and trembles. He respects God. And you know when he's in the presence of God, he has to tell the truth. God won't let him lie to him because God knows the truth. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to recognize how powerful our God is and how weak that devil is. He's wimpy. Yeah, you gotta and the world's are following after that false God of this world. That's what God called him. Yeah. God of this world has blinded the minds and hearts of God's people, lest the glorious gospel of the light of Jesus would burn right down in their mind and heart. Yeah. And they would believe and come out of that condemnation. That's where most of the world is, Brother Paul, right now, in that condemnation. Yeah, amen. That's what it is. Imprisoned by Satan. God never meant for that to be. That's why God made a way that a man is stronger and he can open up those bars where you're all bound up with Satan and loose you and set you free. Jesus said, when you're free of me, you're free indeed. That's what he did. And when them old devils begin to say that art, the Holy One of God, had the Lord said, hush your mouth and come out of him. Yeah. They had to obey, didn't they? Had to obey. And they come out of the man you talking about, a happy little man. They saw that miracle. How do you know that no there was devils in there? You ever seen somebody mean to the dog and all of a sudden they turn around and they're not mean no more? <laughs> That's how you know. <laughs> That's where I was at one time. Mean to the dog and the devils come out of me. And the Lord made me that I love everybody. Yeah. Don't want to be mean to people. I want to tell them the truth. I want to show and manifest the love that you were talking about to our people that they'll believe that God is in us. Make a difference in our people's lives around here. Yes, sir. Amen. Come from the field of sin and give their life to the Lord. Think about how glorious that is. Only God can do that. Amen. Just like the brother says. Just put it just right where it's at. I'm just a mouthpiece. And it's good to have a big mouth. Sometimes. Sometimes in the right direction. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Just in a little while after that, he went on down the road. He kept working, didn't he? I must be up about my father's business. That's what he said. He didn't work me, did he? Went down there in a little man's house. You mean they had church in a man's house? We used to do that. We'll still do it sometimes if somebody's all bound up and can't get out and they want to have a little church. We'll go visit them. We'll have church singers and stuff. I enjoy it. How about you all? Yes. I think Sister Gladys was the last one that we had a little service there before she got sick with that and died. And she was just crying and enjoying it so marvelously because she couldn't get out. That's what, that's what Jesus was doing down the road in a man's house. Yeah. So that's all right then, then if Jesus was doing it. Yes. You know that the world has passed rules and laws in certain cities and things. You can't have church in a man and woman's house. Sounds to me like they want to shut up the gospel and not let it get out to our people, especially to our children, like the man was talking about. The truth will set them free. And if you shut up the truth, how are you going to get free? Man, it's a blessing to be here that the truth can be free. Yeah, amen. See, think about it. I want you to not forget about this. Right. This is glorious. Yes, it is. <laughs> when he got in that little house and was preaching the gospel to them, and it was surprising them how wonderful that it was and what they was feeling until, until he showed the true nature that God was in the flesh. I want you to think about how weak-minded people are. As long as things, oh yeah, he's, oh yeah. That's God's word. Oh, that's exactly right. God right there. God's word. They didn't know he was God. But that's God's word. 
These old boys heard about Jesus up the road. And they loved the Lord. And they had faith in the Lord. Every one of them. Even the man that was sick of the palsy in the bed. Had no the Lord in his heart. Does it say that in the scripture? No, don't have to. The Lord said they'd all have faith. That's good enough, ain't it? That's good enough. <clears throat> Got down to that man's house. Brother Andy couldn't get inside that house. Why? Because there's a big crowd there. Let's listen to a man that I'm telling you spoke like no man ever spoke. He spoke with power and authority and they wanted to hear it. There's a crowd there. Did them old boys turn around and go back home? No siree. They done come hard telling how far packing their buddy on the beach. I ain't going back to we see Jesus. No, we're going to do. Get that in your mind, lost man, lost woman this evening. Don't go back home until you find Jesus. He's no. here. He's calling. Yes, he He's is. the preacher. Yes. He asked. God asked to the church today they should be saved. Through Jesus. That's the way it works. That's right. They couldn't get in the windows or the doors. They got up on top of the roof of that man's house. Man he started tearing the shingles loose. The dust of falling down in front of all of them. And I could just see them old boys in that house. Brother Paul said, man, there's somebody nutty up there on the roof of them. This man's a trying to preach to us and the dust is a falling down from the roof. <laughs> they got a hole big enough to get a man in a bed down through that pretty good size hole. <laughs> Wonder what the man in all the house was thinking. <laughs> He, he got the love of God in and said, they'll fix her. <laughs> <laughs> Set that man in the bed of palsy right in front of Jesus. And Jesus said, son. Well, man, I like that, don't you? Right. He saw their faith the way up the road to come. He saw it before the world was. He knows yeah. what was going to happen. Yeah. He knows everything. Yeah. Know when they's coming. Know when they's going to be there. No, they wasn't going to quit until they found Jesus and got him right in front of Jesus. Jesus is here this evening. We brought him with us, didn't we? He loves you and he wants to save you if you will give your life to him. Set that bed right down in front of Jesus and Jesus looked at that man with compassion and love. Son, thy sins are forgiven thee. That's the best thing that ever be taught to anybody on top of this earth. Regardless if, you're, if your flesh is healed or not, we're here temporal, but we like our flesh healed, don't we? We pray for that. Because we love God's people who want to continue on working for the Lord while it's called day. For when night that death comes upon us, no more work can we do. But that's the best thing that that man could ever hear. Son, thy sins are forgiven thee. Then people began to murmur in their hearts and minds and probably saying it out loud, some of them. And the Lord perceived what they was thinking from their heart. He's a heart searcher, ain't he? Which is easier. Listen to me, people, he was saying. Which is easier to say unto this man, Son, thy sins are forgiven thee. Or to say to this man, Take up thy bed and walk. But that ye may know that God has given his son power upon the earth to forgive sin. I say unto this man, sick of palsy, take up thy bed and walk. And he did. Amen. He jumped up, leaped with joy and happiness with his bed. And done what the Lord told him to do. Rejoicing on his way. Going home. Walking. Look at here, boy. I'm walking and kicking high today. Glory. And on top of that, my sins are forgiven. Amen. What he said, do you think he believed it? He had faith, yes. didn't he? That's what the Lord said, he had faith. Yes. It's impossible to please God without faith. When we got that faith, assurance that your sin shall be forgiven. That's what the Lord said. Come to him with a broken and contrite spirit and no eyes will I turn you away. That's what the Lord said. That's the truth, Brother Jack. It's still just as powerful today as it ever was. Yeah. You know what it did to them old boys there that day? Just like it would this day time. It scared them to death. They said, we've seen strange things today. We've seen the glory of God today. They still didn't think it was God in the flesh. They, they just thought that he was a prophet that God had raised up, was a preaching God's word. Didn't have no idea yet that that was the Messiah. That's the way the world is. The world is crying tonight. The Messiah is coming. <laughs> We're crying tonight. The Messiah is coming again. There's 
a big difference in coming and coming again, ain't it? Yes. He done God. He done God. He done already set her up. It's all perfect. He's got all power in heaven and in earth. Think about what all means. All power in heaven and earth. That means that nothing can be added to it. Ain't nothing else can be added to it. Don't you think that if he built a place over yonder that has to be added to it? Do you think that it's finished when he said it's finished on the cross? That means it's finished. The building is already set. Now, my people in order from generation to generation is a building on the building. Building on that foundation, it's set. It's not yet to come, it's already here. The world is preaching falsehoods and doctrine. And it all comes from the devil, the lies does. And it keeps people saying, Well, I'm going to look forward to the time when the Lord comes and sets up his kingdom over yonder. And all the world will be gathered into it. When an old prophet called Daniel the prophet a long time ago had began to speak about what he saw. A great image. And it was all those old natural kingdoms of the world at that time that was going to come about that hadn't come about yet. The only one that had come about is that golden head that was Nebuchadnezzar. Babylonian Empire. And that's what he was in. In bondage. You mean tell me that Daniel the prophet, a man of God, that served God, that was close to God, and God would uh, just send messages down through him that he had talked to the people and allowed them to be in bondage? And that where we're at today, Christian men and women, in the bondage of this world, as far as this creature is, what the government says to pay this or go. Yeah, pay this or go. Let me just make it simple. <laughs> we're in bondage. But with Jesus, we're free. Because we're free down on the inside. If they lock us up in prison, we're still free. Yeah. That's what old Paul and Silas was singing and glorifying God and them right in prison. And God released them, didn't he? Yeah. God's all powerful. No, nothing, I mean, nothing can be added to it. He's a good God, ain't he? Yes, he is. With that great image. Well, look at the time. I didn't have no idea. Don't worry about it. Oh, no, the people start yawning, you know. They do this. Rose, I told her to do that, but I don't want to. Here's that great image, and I'll try to cover this in Dutch. I love, I love the God of heaven, don't you? I love to just see the images and the things that he showed us in the scriptures and know that it's got power in it and great meaning and that it will reach our people if they'll believe. That all that image that was put together, that golden head, the silver arms and chest, the bronze belly and thighs, and the iron legs and iron feet and iron toes with that clay mingled with it. And then he said, I saw, now this is Daniel the prophet writing down what God had shown him. Uh, talking to the people at that time and still talking to us this time. This is before it ever come about, but it's already come about in our time. Ain't it? <laughs> Saw an image that was standing, boy, he pretty to look at. That's a worldly image. Carnality. Kingdoms of the natural world. But then the God of heaven began to hew without hands of stone. And his name is Jesus. And as they wrote the song, come rolling down through Babylon and struck that great image on its feet and broke it into pieces and consumed therefore of it. And for in the days of these kings, saith God, that I'll set up a kingdom upon this earth and it'll not be left to other people, but it will break apart this kingdom and consume them and it shall stand forever. Yeah. That's a kingdom we're in. That's the kingdom we're in. Thank you. Yeah. Ain't it good that brothers agree together on these things? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Some dog, Brother Bill. Yeah. All that's yet to come, they'll say. When the prophecy was said back there in the book. Right. And you know what else? God even made it plainer at the last chapter of that book. He said, Daniel, he said, these things I told you to, to write about. He said, right now, seal them up. What's that mean? That means close to death. You take this wax, you pour on it, and it's sealed up. 
what it's not sealed up anymore, is it? What's it mean when a seal is broken? It means it's been revealed. It means it's coming back. Yeah. That's like a man writing a will yeah. that it's not no good to nobody until that man dies. Amen. That's what it's talking about. So when the Lord came at the time of that Roman Empire, sure. that was those legs and them feet and clay that cut this short. He was that great stone hewed out of the mountain without hands. Mm -hmm. That come and struck that great image on the feet. Where is Rome today? It done tore all pieces, ain't it? Bunch of heathens. <laughs> Let's just get plain about it. They had all the things in it that's going on right now in this country. Ain't that sad? Homosexuality up to here. It's okay. It's okay. Killing children. It, it's okay. It's okay. Killing Christians. Let, let's, let's use them. They ain't no count for nothing. Let's, let's stick them up on these big stakes and line the road into Rome here and set fire to them at night to show the way. Let's throw them and, and have a little fun watching them. Let's throw them out here in that Colosseum. That part of it still stands there. Study history about it. And let's, walk, let's make sport of it and watch the lines and the right. Let's throw a little bit of meat and hide off things on them to make it go even faster. That the bears and lions and the old dogs and wolves and whatever they had thrown in there would attack Christian human beings and devour them because they would not deny the word of the living God. They stood on the name of Jesus even though that their life was taken from them that we have what we've got tonight. If you deny the word of God and that righteous men and women are dying and to get it down to us, shame on you. Shame on you. They died to get that to where we're at right now. Yes, they did. Glory, hallelujah. By the name of Jesus, the power of God that was in them, that they was willing to die for the word of God. We, must be we may have to come to that as that brother was talking about. I hope not. I hope he comes and gets us, Brother Bill, before anything like that. But now there ain't no promise of that. We've done seen some Christian men and women in our time on news. Them old fellas over there. That they think they have a right to kill all infidels, and guess who the infidels is? To them. You're not man. We're the infidels. Shock the knife through their throat here with a big camera on it nationwide and say, Deny Jesus. I ain't going to do it. That's in our time. Can it come to this nation? As all the Queen used to say, Don't you never doubt it. God said a nation without God cannot stand. Right, right. He told an old man one time, boy, I'm telling you, I get too much on my mind. <laughs> Name of Lot. Not try to hush. I said I'd hush him because I'm getting a bad rock in my hand. Bless his heart, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> old Lot. Word of God to the angels. Come right there. You think the word of God has come down here tonight telling you to come out of the evilness and come into the kingdom and liberty of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. He told Lot, come out of that evil, wicked city of Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah. Because I'm going to destroy it with fire. Mm -hmm. There's some of that that he was talking about, that kind of fire. Mm -hmm. God's in control of the fire, brother. Don't you never doubt the spiritual and the natural. Mm -hmm. Cut this story short. Yeah. That old angel... I was reading that just the other day again. Just come to my mind. It wasn't on my mind a while ago. Brother John, these two angels was there. Mm -hmm. And here was Lot and his wife and, and, and two daughters. <clears throat> and they got, them angels got them by the hand and directed them out of that city for they was foretold that God will destroy it because there was less than 10 in that nation that was serving God. Less than ten. That's, that's what he was talking to Abraham. Abraham said, Spare, Lord, if you find ten, oh yeah, I will. Oh my goodness. Good there. A big nation of Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around about there. 
wickedness all the time. And you know what it said in the, in the New Testament? When it's talking about in the time of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. We're talking about Jesus. Mm -hmm. Then it said, you know, they was married, married and given in marriage. Do you know that when it was talking about Sodom and Gomorrah, it didn't mention no getting in marriage and being married? Right. What was Sodom? What, what did the man Lot offer to those evil people out there in that city? His daughter. Yes. Right. Virgin, young women. Wonderful. And wouldn't touch them. There wasn't no marriage or given in marriage in that land. Do you know that his daughters was married and had never been touched? Does it say how long that they was married and never been touched? No, it don't have to. A lot had been there a long time. I'm talking about a wicked, wicked place and God known it. Yeah. And he come to before him to destroy it yeah. and he used it as an example of the book of Matthew that the Lord when he comes it would be like in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. And it is, ain't it? Yes, yes, Brother yes. brought some of those things from my mind. So shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. It's here, boys. It's close. It's yeah. here, he can come any time. I've said that for years. But I'm telling you, it's, I hit the wax and worse. Better get in the church, my man. Better get in the church. So we can go home and be with the Lord. When he took Lot out and the two daughters, and he told them right then, he said, Don't you look back. When you come out of the field of sin, don't you look back. You keep your eyes and your faith upon the Lord Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of our faith, and you'll see what it looks like in heaven and a mortal glory. Amen. Don't look back. Right. Man that gets hold of the plow and starts looking back, he ain't worthy of the kingdom of God. It's plain in the scriptures, ain't it? That wife of Lot, there was something there in that city that her heart desired. Back to it, John. She looked back. Yeah. Disobey God. God means what He says. Turn her into a pillar of salt. Lot and them two daughters left out of there. You know what God told them? And they didn't do that either. And God called him a righteous man over in the New Testament, but he didn't fulfill everything that God said at the first. Now, let me put it that way. But he did. God knows how bad it was going to get. He said, when you go out, he said, you go up out way yonder in the mountains. And he began to <coughs> nerve him with God a little bit there. He said, uh, there's a little city right over here. Yeah, let me go over let me go over there. And he went there, and it must have been pretty close to what he was seeing because it scared the life out of him. He said, well, let's get out of here and go in the mountains. He done what God said eventually, didn't he? You know, God is patient with us. When we mess up, and we'll say, Lord, I should have done what you said to do. Yeah. He's just to forgive us of all our sin. You think about how glorious that God is. Mm -hmm. And they went out there, and I'm telling you, let me try to finish up here. He saw the most horrendous, scary things that I absolutely that a man or a woman could ever see, Brother John. On, I'm telling you that when they was on that mountain there, and when that city especially, and those big balls of fire and brimstone come down from God out of heaven and was mm -hmm. crushing down in that city, mm -hmm. and it was melting and burning. You know what I want to show you all back? This is how true this is. There's a man who took the Word of God and went to look at him where that he thought that it would probably be located because he knows the Dead Sea and he knows that this your land was right over from where Sodom and Gomorrah was by the scriptures. I've studied that myself. I know what I'm talking about. And above there was the land of Reuben when God had blessed his people to come out of Egypt and gave them properties and that was one of the first properties and it was that land of Reuben was above all this. As far as looking at the map this way. So it's over here. And it was a lush and glorious land, beautiful land. That's why Lot chose it. It ain't no more. That show I watched, they finally, they found it and went to dig it. And do you know they've got sulfur balls yet? 
sulfur balls that they found. That's what God said. From that the dead. Yeah. That they uncovered, digging dirt away, and could take a lighter and set fire to it and hit just burn like wildfire. That's in our time that they found that over there. Does God tell us the truth? All the time. God is the truth. And when men try to disprove it, they always prove it. They'll find it. If they'll do it right, they'll find the truth. God destroyed that city because of that wickedness was in it. And he said in this book of Matthew, he said, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. Amen. Now, the same, and I want you to think about this, the same day that Lot and his family left out of Sodom and Gomorrah, the fire came down. And you just said in the New Testament, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. The same day that he comes and gets the church, the fire's coming. Yeah. I, that's plain enough, ain't it? Yes. Yeah. So you tell me whether there's any kind of kingdom or, or millennial reign or anything. I mean, that don't make a lick of sense. The more I study Brother Bill and find more scriptures, the more it disproves it. There's deception in the world. God, he don't care about natural kingdoms. That spiritual man called Jesus, he's a, he's a spiritual God. God said, I'm a spirit. I seek a son to worship his spirit. He destroyed the natural kingdom and set up a spiritual kingdom. Yeah. No unclean thing shall cross over it. We've got it. It's inside of us. Amen. We're in it, and it's a, and you can come out of the field of sin by the word of God and faith in it, and God will add you to it. Come on, singers and say. Amen. While they sang, if there's somebody ready for the church, let me tell you this. Please don't put it on. Please don't put it off. While if they sang, if there's somebody ready for the church, come up and let it be known. Well, my dad's your witness. I thank you for your surprise, Blake. I, I hope that you take heed at, at the Lord's word. Whether it be I or they, just some Jesus is preached, and so that you believe. Jesus is the preacher. He, he is the Word. It, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And, and them old apostles said, and, and we beheld His glory. And they bragged on Him. That's the only begotten Son of God, full of grace and truth. He's here this evening inside of us. If you're ready for the church, come on, let it be known. When the
you that be willing to just raise your hand and say, Church, pray for me. That's pray such a God me. bless that man. But that did that one. God bless. <laughs> Need to remember our people when we pray. And we do. Yes, we got them on the list and we take them to the radio yes, program and yes, them. Pray for this. Where you go to sleep. And I really love yes, removing them from the list. We <laughs> usually have a little practice here around our new home. You get ready, you go right ahead and tell me. <laughs> So, uh, Jeff, won't you go up here and sing us a song? And we want to, our new convert to come and uh, stand up here. We want to welcome them in. That's, that's our tradition here, and it's a good tradition. And uh, you're already in, but we want to, everybody to manifest their love towards uh, our, our brother and sister that just give their life to the Lord. And we're so thankful this evening that they're with us. And uh, so, if, if they'll come out here and stand. Great place, then. Brother Thomas, Sister Angie. I know you're going home. Here. 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 Here.
security and the safety in God our Father. Anything else needs to be spoken? Any appointments that needs to be given out? I started to say I'm sorry for holding so long, but I'm not sorry. <laughs> I'd be laughing if I said sorry. <laughs> but I do need to watch and not take so much time sometimes. Everybody knows where Turkey Creek Church at uh, Wilsonville and it's all out well. Thank you. Everyone Good place to go. Yeah. I enjoyed that revival the first week. Yeah. Well, it actually went on next week. Next part, yeah. We're just one church here. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One church. Real church. Yeah. Anything else? Any other points? Ruth Charlie, next Sunday, Father's Day, is out to my family cemetery, Robinson Cemetery. And I wish for all of you to come that can. We don't have very many comes anymore, but what are there are happy while we're there. That's good. Praise the Lord. Any other points? And Brother Roger will be back. <laughs> well, that'll be much better. You know? I called him today and asked him how everything went. He said, we got a little bit of rain. He said, but we had a good service. I said, well, that's good. <laughs> Lord's good to know so. Anyways, uh, anything else? If there's nothing else, uh, well, James, would you give us this message? Good Lord, this evening I agree. Thank you, Chef. A wonderful meeting. A couple coming to the left, to end of the labor, to labor free through their lifetime. We trust, we hope. But God, we know and do believe that you'll take care of those that have been born of your spirit. Yeah, Lord. And we'll always look to you for everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Y'all be